a buddy of mine is doing some amazing work um, in short and I'm doing a piss poor job of trying to explain what he does but uh, as far as I'm concerned he's helping guys get their lives together and you know improve themselves so he has a program for training and he you know basically gets people to stop eating garbage and taking care of themselves you know like I mean that what, what better could you do right um, you know stop sitting on the couch drinking beer and making yourself sick and get up get active go work out do something do something positive for yourself you know if exercise came in a pill we'd all be taking it right that you can't deny that look at the research you know people say oh you can't exercise you know you can't out exercise a bad diet well actually if you look at the research even people that eat a terrible diet if they exercise um, actually their health improves even on a terrible diet so exercise is healthy for you um, like it's one of the healthiest things you can do and then if you get your shit together and you know stop sitting around drinking beer and eating junk and just making yourself sick now life gets even better because now you've taken care of both sides of it the diet and the exercise and of course um, you know there's a lot of other lifestyle factors that come in here and so I'm going to touch on something here that he brought up uh, that he asked me about and he mentioned that a lot of the guys that he is helping and working with struggle with things like porn addiction and I um, I'm not an expert in porn addiction I'm not an expert in addiction um, but I have had gosh I don't even know how many classes now on things like abnormal psychology and uh, addiction neuropharmacology you know which actually tells you a lot about how the brain works even if you look at the way that drugs work in the brain then well, you kinda have to know how the brain works I'm gonna touch on this from a weird angle though so rather than talking directly about porn addiction um, or like what you should do to you know, stop your addiction uh, let's just touch on something real quick here uh, you know people will tell you that you can't be addicted to food we hear that all the time and yet there are documented cases where people were addicted to water to the point where they drink so much water that they died you can be so addicted to water that you overconsume it to the point where you die but oh you can't be addicted to porn you can't be addicted to food you can't be addicted to come on people if we have documented cases where people were addicted to water to the point where they consumed it at an amount that killed them uh, I think we can all agree that you can be addicted to just about anything okay so where I'd like to take this is I'd like to open up your mind and your perspective and just have you look at things from a different angle for a moment if you've heard of classical conditioning that's Pavlov you know rings the bell the dog sal you know, salivates there's also operant conditioning okay and so I'm just going to talk about this in the context of porn because the question was about porn addiction everything that you do is classical or operant conditioning you are literally teaching yourself you are learning things you're reinforcing patterns okay so let's just use porn as our example here um, you know in Pavlov's experiment right he rings the bell and the dogs get food and so now they start to associate bell rings I get food therefore now when the bell rings they start salivating before they even get the food because they're anticipating this reward of the food similarly if you looked at a rat and we're teaching them how to push a lever every time they push the lever we give them food so now this reinforces that behavior they're getting a reward every time that they push the lever you've seen this even in studies where we've given rats cocaine okay you give rats cocaine and they will slam that lever the only reason they hit the lever um, for food is because they're actually uh, calori calorically restricted so they're they're very hungry so they're motivated to push the lever if you were a well-fed rat or a well-fed mouse they won't push that lever until they're hungry it's not like they just push the lever non-stop for food it's not like they just eat 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 um, they have to be hungry which motivates them to push the lever then they get the reward of the food okay so in any case those are two different examples one's operant conditioning one's classical conditioning and what I'd like you to think about here is instead of food you're getting an orgasm right like oh he said a dirty word but come on like we're adults here if you're watching porn uh, I hope you're old enough to deal with the word orgasm orgasm in any context is, is it's a reward right you're, you're getting this big flood of you know dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and all these things like that it's a big reward okay 
your brain gets flooded with all these reward chemicals. Yay. You know, you're motivated to go have sex? Of course you are. That's how we evolved. And then whenever you accomplish that, you have an orgasm, and that orgasm is a reward to your brain, which then further, you know, now you want to have more sex. Um, hey, there's never been a meal that was so satiating that you never needed to eat again. Okay? And that's how your brain works. So there was never a time that you had sex that was so good that you're like, you know what? That's it for me. I never need to have sex again for the rest of my life. We're uh, like addicts chasing the dragon or whatever they call it, right? You have sex, it's good, and then, you know, you want to have sex again in the future because you want to chase that reward a second time. Well, with porn, think about this. It's classical conditioning, operant conditioning, however you're applying it. Basically, you're watching pornography and then you're rewarding yourself for it, right? Because you're going to have an orgasm. This is reinforcing your addiction. You watch porn, you reward yourself. It's no different than if you get rewarded yourself after every workout. Like you said, oh, every time I work out, I'm going to sit down and have ice cream. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, this is going to become a pattern of behavior. Okay? Uh, you see the same thing with drugs. Right? Every time you stick a needle in your arm or you snort up a line of powder, um, hey, you're rewarding yourself. So now you're motivated to go do it again. Cigarettes. You feel the urge to go smoke a cigarette. You smoke that cigarette. You get the reward. Now you want to do it again. Okay? It's, like, it's the same concept over and over and over again. It's just applying it to different things. In this case, we're talking about porn, and you are literally conditioning yourself um, to... You know, they talk about how guys are actually suffering from erectile dysfunction. And I don't believe that people are suffering from erectile dysfunction because they have some kind of venous uh, insufficiency or they have some kind of blood flow problem. Uh, it's, oftentimes, it's not even low testosterone or anything. It's that you've rewired your brain. So now, you are only visually stimulated to watching pornography. You're getting off on watching a group of guys have sex with the female that you desire. So now whenever you're in bed with your own wife, you can't get it up because it's just not arousing enough to you because you've rewired your brain that you need to have this extreme, you know, people watch some really like extreme violent porn and stuff like that. Real life just isn't going to be nearly as, uh, I don't know, extreme. I hate using the word extreme twice, but, you know, you're watching these pornographic videos that are very see I hate using that word extreme I don't want to use it again and again um, you're watching these pornographic videos that are not realistic or even similar to what happens in real life okay you know um, come on like porn is it's, it's a fantasy or it's acting or whatever like that's not how you have sex with your wife you don't have sex with your wife and you know there's like five guys and weird positions and all kinds of crap like that you're not slapping her and punching her at least I hope you're not you know um, and your wife doesn't look like a porn star she doesn't have big fake boobs and you know all that shit um, like we're rewiring ourselves to be stimulated by something that doesn't exist in the real world okay so, you know, when you watch a lot of porn, you're teaching yourself, you're conditioning yourself to be stimulated by that. Now, you're no longer stimulated by having, literally, a naked woman in your bed. Think about that for a minute. You're more interested and more stimulated by watching a video than you are by a real human being in your bed. Um, and, like, this is something that people have talked about. You know, this is something that guys have talked about. Like, they, there, are, there are guys who apparently prefer to masturbate over having sex. That shouldn't surprise you, because it's conditioning. You have conditioned yourself. You have taught yourself. You have learned this behavior. And now that is your preferred form of sexual gratification. Okay? And so all I want you to think about here is what are you teaching yourself? And I mean this to apply to everything, okay? You can think about it in terms of what you eat, what you consume, what you watch on TV, whatever it is. 
everything you do is classical or operant conditioning. You are constantly teaching yourself, even if you don't realize that you're doing it, you are teaching yourself something. And so, you know, in this situation of porn addiction, what's happened is you've reinforced this behavior so many times. I watch porn, I get reward. I watch porn, I get reward. I watch porn, I get reward. Eventually, you have rewired your brain, just like Pavlov's dogs, um, or the rat pushing the lever, okay? You have rewired yourself to, this is your stimulus now. This is what you seek. This is what, this is what turns you on, okay? Can you undo that? Yes. Yes, you can. It's going to suck because you have what's called an extinction burst, okay? It's a technical term. Basically, when you stop watching porn, you're going to crave it a whole bunch for a little while, and then eventually, you're not going to crave it at all, and then eventually, you're going to reset uh, back to, you know, your old self, okay? So can you unlearn things? Yes, you can. Just as you can learn things and condition yourself and teach yourself something, you can also undo that. So... I'm not going to sit here and give a prescription or anything like that. I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. Okay, uh, I don't treat patients. I don't. I'm not a clinician. Okay, I, I did research in labs. That's what I do. Okay, and it's mostly on mice and dogs and other things like that. But like, I don't treat patients. So none of this is prescriptive. None of this is medical advice. I just am trying to open up your mind to look at things from a different perspective, and I encourage you to look at things in a perspective of what am I conditioning teaching myself to do. And so if you are teaching yourself to be stimulated by porn, you are going to reinforce that, and then you are going to go down that path where you become addicted to porn. And if you do find that you are addicted to porn and you are compulsively watching porn, or that you seek porn, or that you prefer porn over having sex with an actual person, you can undo that. You're not stuck. That's one of the first things that people need to realize. You're not stuck. You can unlearn that. Um, it's like claustrophobia. People are claustrophobic, and they can unlearn that through exposure therapy, okay? Well, you can unlearn a lot of things. So if you're addicted to porn, you can actually unlearn that. Um, but the first step is going to be that you're going to have to dig in deep, put your heels in, and just swear off of it. Like, it, it's going to suck. You're going to have an extinction burst. Your brain's going to tell you, I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. And guess what? If you stick through it, you get through that hard point, right, where it's like you have this craving, like a, craving a cigarette or something, uh, craving caffeine. I, I know all about that one. Quitting caffeine was hard. Um, if you get through it, you'll come out the other side and you won't crave it anymore. Um, and this isn't like a, a switch that flips. It's not like I got up one day and was like, you know what, I don't want coffee today. It was like every day I wanted coffee, but as time went on, Every day I wanted it a little bit less. And so slowly over time, you know, it was like, huh. I didn't even realize it. But there was one day where I was like, huh. That's interesting. I don't know how long I've been like this, but I got up today and I, I don't even want coffee. And that might have been that way for three or four days, maybe a week. I have no idea because I just kind of lost track of it. It was like at some point I stopped having to resist it. You know, I'd wake up in the morning, all I wanted was a cup of coffee, and I told myself, nope, we're not doing that, we're not doing that anymore. It's really hard to quit it, right? And each day, I craved a little bit less, craved a little bit less, and then eventually I stopped craving it, and I didn't even realize I stopped craving it. I just didn't even think about it. So the same thing will happen if you are addicted to gambling, you're addicted to porn, you're addicted to whatever it is. When you first quit it, you're going to struggle, and then eventually it's going to be less and less and less, until at some point you're going to forget about it. You won't even realize that you're not craving it because you're not craving it. So you're not thinking about it. And so you can unlearn these things. Um, and that's the point that I want to drive home here. So I realize I'm talking about porn addiction, but this really goes for anything video game addiction. I, you know, if you're addicted to playing video games, you can quit that behavior. Everything that you do is just classical or operant conditioning. You are learning all the time and you are reinforcing behaviors. If you stop reinforcing them, um, you will unlearn those behaviors. You know, at some point, if you just kept ringing the bell and you never fed the dogs, they would actually stop salivating. It would take a lot of exposures, right? A lot of times you'd have to ring the bell without giving them food. But if you did that enough times, you ring the bell and don't give them food, 
they'll, they'll stop salivating whenever you ring the bell. And the same thing for the rat. The rat will push the lever, and if you stop giving the rat food, eventually it stops pushing the lever because it realizes there's no reason to push this lever because I'm not going to get rewarded. So eventually it stops pushing the lever. You'll have an extinction burst. They'll slam the lever crazy initially. They'll go nuts. They'll hit that lever. Bang, 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 because they're expecting something. And then eventually they just kind of realize, like, hey, I can push this lever and nothing's coming. So then they quit. And that's... I know it sounds stupid to compare yourself to a rat or a dog, but like learning is learning. That's how we all learn. We we learn through, you know, reinforcement schedules. So whenever you aren't being reinforced for a behavior, you will eventually stop doing that behavior. I really hope this helps someone. I really do. Um, and I, I'm sorry if this is oversimplified. I'm sure the behavior analyst out there will be like, dude, you oversimplified Skinner so much. But I'm not trying to make a scientific argument here that... Um, you know, is going to go up against peer review and everything. I'm trying to explain something for the average person to be able to understand this and then use it to help themselves. So if someone wants to debate me in the comments about, you know, Skinner or Pavlov or whatever, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to try to have a scientific argument here. I'm just trying to explain to people the idea behind this, that you're teaching yourself things and you can unteach or unlearn, whatever word you want to use. Those aren't really words, but I'm going to use those terms. You can unlearn those things uh, the same way that you learned them in the first place. Now you're just not going to reinforce it. So I hope this is helpful. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you have opinions on this, comment below. Um, if you have questions, comment below. You know, um, we can talk about how dopamine is actually a motivation. It's not a, it's not a reward. Dopamine motivates you to go do something. Um, and so, like, that's why, like, the whole idea of, like, the dopamine detox, people are like, oh, it's not real. The fuck it isn't real. Um, like, there's definitely something to dopamine motivating you to do things. And if you don't follow through and you don't feed that um, desire, craving, etc., eventually you'll stop having that desire, craving. Like, that's how people quit smoking. And think about this. Um, your desire to quit smoking, right? You don't want to quit smoking you want to be a non-smoker. So you think of it this way, the same way. It's not that you want to quit porn. You want to be a person who doesn't watch porn. Now it's an identity. I'm a non-smoker. Right? You're not trying to quit drinking. You're just sober. You're someone who doesn't drink alcohol. That's who you are, right? Um, that's just a reframing trick. So if you think of it as part of your identity, I'm someone who does not watch porn. I'm someone who does not drink alcohol. I'm someone who does not smoke. Again, that can be really useful for people because if you reframe it and think of it in a different way, a lot of times that actually helps people um, because the idea of I'm going to quit smoking is much different than saying my goal is to be a non-smoker. So there's another tip for you. I hope that that's useful or helpful. You'll find that in a lot of books. I can't claim that, uh, credit for that. I don't even know who to give the citation to because that's been noted in so many different books um, that I would feel weird telling you one of them because there's like at least probably 50 books that tell you your goal is to be a non-smoker. So, like I said, if you find this helpful, like the video, comment below, and if you uh, if you like this kind of content, subscribe. Um, you know, ask questions and I'll try to address them. Maybe a question out there uh, even warrants a whole video to discussing it. So. Uh, I really hope this helps, and thank you so much for your time.